the the publishing industry is you know it's unique unto itself um years and years ago when i was still writing picture books and i still do write picture books actually i have i have a new picture book coming out this summer which i'm very very happy about uh, oh, what's the name of it it's called max attacks and it's about a cat a kitten basically that just attacks everything you know he's just a, a madman in the house and so he's just on the he's on the he's on the attack path anyway um an esteemed uh, audience can look forward to purchasing uh, seeing that when's it coming out it's coming out in june okay so, and it's just adorable the artist is penelope dunnigan and i think that's her name yeah i'm sure it is i hope, hope i got that right she's a a fairly new artist and so she did a great job she she painted the cat blue so he's just this, this little wild blue cat and it just makes me happy <laughs> so but anyway um so years and years ago um i was working i i wrote a picture book and it was based on um my stepfather i had a i had a really wonderful stepfather and um, and I started thinking one day that, you know, stepfathers are so under step, step parents get such a bad rap in children's books. Actually, in all, you know, across the board, they get a bad rap. Um, and, uh, you know, there's always the wicked or evil stepmother or stepfather. And and, you know, some of that is deserved. I mean, a trope doesn't become a trope unless it happens. And so, um, but there, there are far more. I'm convinced. I'm quietly thinking I can name at least five terrible step parents I know of. But go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're out there. I'm not denying it. But there are also some really great step parents. You know, some that are doing great by their stepchildren. And and I had a I had a a, a pretty good step father. And so, you know, and and one of the things he did to win us over was he had the best stories. He was just a great storyteller. And so, you know, we'd sit at, at, in the evenings, we'd have dinner and he'd just launch into a story and it was always funny and he was great at telling them. And, um, and if you can imagine it, he married my mother. I have two sisters. He married my mother. I was 16. My sisters were 14 and 13. So imagine he was a lifelong bachelor marrying a woman with three teenage daughters. I think that was really brave. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever known that bravery in my entire life. <laughs> no, I, I've never been that brave. So I just, I wanted to write a book, you know, to honor him. And he, he died many, many years ago, so he wasn't around. But um, anyway, uh, so I wrote this, this book, um, about and I and I made it a family of coyotes, so we can talk about animals after this, right? Sure. But, um, so and you can I talk about anything you want. <laughs> I I chose coyotes specifically because they're scruffy, you know, and families are scruffy. Coyotes, you know, they're just they're not like they're not as glamorous as like a wolf, you know. They're they're not as you know charming as as a raccoon, I mean, they're, they're scruffy and, and kind of solitary. And so, um, so I thought it'd be cool to have a family of coyotes that to have a little coyote who has to deal with a, a stepfather and, or a new step has to come to accept a new stepfather. Okay. Well, so I wrote that book and sold it and there's a whole history about this book, but anyway, bottom line, it took 17 years for it to be out 17 years. <laughs> because of something you wanted to do or because of the publishers? It, it was just a variety of things. It was like unfortunate events that kept happening. You know, the wrong illustrator, then an illustrator kept it, then the publishing company got bought up by another publishing company, the editor left, a new editor came in, she left. I mean, it's just like one thing after another. <laughs> so uh, uh, the, the lesson here, the lesson I want to leave you with is that, um, okay, one of my concerns when that book came out, even though I loved it all along, was that, you know, I wrote that book like 17 years earlier and I was thinking, this book is gonna come out and people are gonna go, Kathy Apple is not improving. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this reads like it's 17 years worse than yeah, her previous yeah. book. Like she could have written this way back in the day, but what? You know, as, as it turned out, the book was fine. It's called uh, it's called uh, when when Otis courted Mama, and um, Harcourt Harcourt um, published it, and it's it's just a terrific 
you know, uh, I mean, the, the art is beautiful and I just, you know, it turned out great. It was worth waiting for, but you know, I, I had a joke that when that book comes out, I'm going to give it, I'm going to hand it its high school diploma. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. So, you know, these things happen. It, it's, it's, yeah. So. Well, of course, publishing is a wonderful industry, and I'm sure you're the only author that ever had a story like no, that. But just in I, case, there's no. there's somebody out there that's watching or, or hearing this, uh, and they're they're experiencing some sort of calamity or another as, as a result of circumstances beyond their control. What did right. you do during those 17 years to, to keep your sanity and keep you focused on all the other books you've written? Yeah, just kept writing. You know, I mean, I did, I went years without even thinking about that book. <laughs> I mean, it was always in the back burner. At one time, my agent tried to get the rights back. You know, she thought maybe we could sell it to somebody else, but um, they, the publisher Harcourt didn't want to let them go. So, um, so that, you know, that was, that was actually encouraging because I thought, well, if they're not going to let them go, then surely they're eventually going to publish it. So, but you know, it just kept falling on one desk after another. And so, um, so yeah, I was, I was very happy to see it come out. <laughs> So, yeah, so I mean, it happened.